Hi on MPI brought to you by DigiKey and Avery. Thank you, DigiKey. Rich Tech is it? That's right. Your power partner. They're their power power partner. That's right. Um, we've covered them before. This is their second time on the uh, show. I think they didn't. We did an LED driver from Rich Tech before. Uh, they do a lot of automotive, a lot of industrial. This week we're going to be looking at an I2S audio amplifier. I do love I2S. Um, this is. Uh, a similar chip but the uh they didn't have an image of the package but this is it. it's the rt 9120s particularly s and this is um an image of it on the eval board so you can see it's like a you know what 20 sorry a 24 to 28 pin qfn and it's a very powerful i2s amplifier um despite this being a tiny little chip it, this is a uh, actually this is sorry this is the wrong screenshot it's a 30 watt not 20 watt because uh, it's the uh, 9120s is a 30 watt stereo inductorless i2s input class d amplifier with stereo or mono output um you know like halfway through i realized that there's the 9120 and the 9120s and we're actually talking about the 9120s uh that's the new version of this chip which is um more powerful it's pin compatible so if you have been using the uh, 9120 um just fyi it's it's the same but better because it's got better specs um so the 9120 in general is um an i2s amplifier so it's digital input uh analog output it drives a speaker directly it can do stereo or it can do mono um the i2s signals can be 1.8 or 3.3 volt input but for the power to the amplifier part you'll need 5 to 26 volts and i like that because it's a nice wide range if you don't need the full 30 watts you know you can do less than we'll show the the power uh rating um you can do your know, 12 volts or less but if you want to use an automotive or industrial system with 24 volt power uh you can power it with 24 volts no problem um and because it's class d you actually have very little power dissipation issues like most people who are used to amplifiers uh that are dealing with 30 watts you're going to have a gigantic heat sink on your class a b not necessary here because it's a class d amplifier so it does um i think they have this spec here it's like 1.5 megahertz uh pwm so like either i think it's either 75 or 1.5 megahertz and um this chip can also do a, a variety of different inputs uh i2s right justified left justified and as well as tdm okay so this is actually made a little mistake so the one we're talking about today is the, actually the rt 9120s uh you can see that they are almost identical same 32 qfn the 30 uh the 9120 is the older version, 20 watt max. The new version is 30 watt max, but otherwise they still have stereo output, 4.5 to 26 volts. Um, I believe they have almost identical um, I squared C command set. Uh, it's also the 21S is a little bit um, more efficient. It's got 94% rather than 92%, and it supports TDM, whereas the previous version did not support T uh, TDM. Um, but there's also other power amplifiers, by the way. So it's like, oh, you want you know uh higher wattage lower wattage uh you can just you know a wide range from rich tech uh we're just going to be only talking about the 9120s here but they do have tons so uh how do you control it well you can give it i2s input and um one thing uh, and and then i squared c to control it so you will need a driver it doesn't have like a free run mode you know you you can't just pipe i2s in and have it just automatically output uh output audio signal um but the i squared c is, is at least well documented there's a full register map inside and then there's like a fault output um and there's you know some power supply stuff um but it's actually like a fairly simple you know what i like is that there's not a lot of extra components needed like you don't need an extra crystal you don't need um uh, m clock input you don't need a pll you know extra capacitors and inductors and whatever it's very much like data in um audio output so one thing that I do like about this is that, you know, if you're wanting to use an audio amplifier, digital audio amplifier with the Raspberry Pi, um, the Raspberry Pi doesn't have an M clock output. And so you want something that can take the bit clock and PLL it up. And then, you know, it can calculate like how much um, 
you know, the, the main clock frequency it needs based on the bit clock and does it automatically. So there are existing I2S chips that do that, but many chips require an M clock. What I really like about this one, if you go back one, it doesn't need it. It just needs left, right clock, bit clock, and then you see there's SDI and SDO. That's because it can route the audio output. It just doesn't actually have a microphone input, even though there's a data output. You only need three digital inputs to um, control the I2S. Okay. Typical use case. Um, so like I said, it's actually, I like how simple it is. Because it's a class D and um, especially if you're using longer wires, you're gonna want that LC filter. In the documentation, they do mention you can use ferrite beads. You don't need to use big inductors, but the eval board does use fairly large 10 microhenry inductors and um, capacitors to make a filter. Probably for EMI reasons, you know, depending on your product, um, if you're gonna be doing EMI testing, you might be able to get away with shorter uh if you're using very short wires um not having to use power inductors you can maybe use ferrite beads but that's uh on your design requirements so you know um probably you can use either but because this is designed you know maybe for um stereo systems that go in automotive or whatever they're expecting to have um a lot of noise that can be coupled in or that it could couple into something so they want to be um extra careful on the output to make sure that they don't get that 1.5 megahertz PWM square wave emitting all over the place. You can also, it uh, turns out, connect it into like dual bridge tide loads. So it is bridge tide output for stereo, but if you want like 50 watts, you can get that um, by tying both the positive and negative outputs of the left and right channel together. And then you can configure it over I squared C to say, hey, I want you to do mono output. Um, you can drive, I think, four ohms with that dual bridge tide load. Otherwise, if you're using stereo, eight ohms where it's at. Although it's a little unclear, maybe you can use six ohm or four ohm as well. It just won't be as efficient. You're going to get the most efficiency with eight ohms uh, at 20 watts. You'll get, you know, 95%. Um, another thing to watch out for is the total harmonic distortion. Um, depending on your power supply, your uh, how much power you're trying to push through and your um, load resistance. On the left, it's eight ohms. On the right, it's four ohms. Um, you'll want to keep it, you know, under 10% total harmonic distortion, or you know, you can actually um, start to hear the effects of the crackling effects. But you know, up to 18 volts, you can still get um, 30 watts into four ohms, and if you want 30 watts into eight ohms, you'll need uh, 24 volts. Okay. Uh, some nice things, I squared C interface means you can set things like the gain over I squared C instead of like digitally by changing um, your, your max uh, integer value on I2S. Of course, there's lots of other settings available, you know, like what format you want, whether you want that mono mode or stereo or mute, um, but you will need a driver for the I squared C interface. Uh, one cool thing that this chip does have is uh, dynamic compression. I'm trying to remember what the dynamic range compression. So, you know, one issue that people have when they have these very powerful amplifiers is that it's very easy to um, have clipping when you get to the higher amplifications. If, you know, if you have an all-in-one system, you know, you can probably tune it so that you'll never generate an audio signal so loud that it would clip on the output. But if people are using the wrong power supply or uh, they're using different spec speakers than you expect, you could have clipping and you want to avoid that because it sounds terrible. And so what you can set up is um, this dynamic compression that as the signal gets louder and louder and louder, it doesn't amplify as much. So you see there's this cutoff where after DRCT, that whatever gain or volume, um, it starts compressing the amount of gain to be lower and lower. And so you never hit um, that clipping rate where you might get square waves into your audio signal. Uh, it's also got a compensation filter, which is kind of nice. So the output LC filter does have a slight effect on um, the audio, uh, especially at high frequencies, because you don't have perfect uh, inductor and capacitor. And so, you know, if you can measure the effective transfer function that is caused by that LC filter on your audio, you can then pre-compensate it. And so you get a little bit of a gain at the high frequencies to get, you know, to basically have an even equivalent DC gain across all frequencies. Um, let's see. Oh, there's an error mode, which is kind of nice. So you can, of course, because there's I squared C, you can read from it, not just set settings. 
And so there's a couple of different error modes. You know, it can flip up that GPIO. You can read it. It'll tell you you have open circuits, you know, shorts. You're missing uh, I2S data. Um, you have a DC voltage where it's not supposed to be. Uh, so that's kind of nice, um, good if you're trying to have a better user interface for people, especially again, if um, people will be doing their own installation with this amplifier. And I did notice that there is a kernel um, module written by um, the Rich Tech team that was submitted um, into mainline in 2021. And so if you want to use this with a single board computer and running Linux, you don't have to do any work because you'll already have a um, sound driver that's built into the kernel ready to go. Finally, there's an eval board. Uh, you want to get started quickly. Uh, big chunky connections for power and speaker output, and then you can just control it over I2C and give it I2S data, and you're good to go. Nice looking eval board, also in stock. Bubble on digi And the price is nice. It's like two to three dollars in quantity. Uh, you know, three dollars for small, two dollars for large quantity. That's a pretty good deal for um Not too shabby. stereos i2s no m clock needed um 30 watts or 50 watts mono stereo i2s amplifier so a nice chip class d uh check it out if you need a big honking stereo system okay. this is a good okay good work nice yeah. Hi, I'm